Welcome back. Our next guests have something incredible to share that is right in our backyard. I had no idea this existed, but if you think of Orange County, most people think of um, Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm and all kinds of the beach and maybe the Real Housewives, but maybe not so much anymore. Um, but now we're gonna give you something else to think about because our two local experts are actually sharing the opportunity to turn OC or Orange County into the sustainability capital of the world, which honestly, if you just think about it, it makes so much sense. And you are able to join them at the upcoming Orange County Sustainability Decathlon, October 5th to 8th, and also the 12th to 15th at the OC Fairgrounds. I'm gonna come back to that information later. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Mike Moodian, the CCO, Chief Communications Officer of the OC Sustainability Decathlon, and Fred Smoller, the President and CEO, also from the OC Sustainability Decathlon. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. I had no idea you existed. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. So why don't you tell us what is the OC Sustainability Decathlon and how did it come to be? Okay, well, Lauren, first, thank you so much for having Mike and I on your program. Mike and I are both professors at Chapman University. Um, in 2013, many of your listeners may remember something called the U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon. It was held at the Great Park with around 15 houses which were built around the world and brought to the Great Park. Uh, it came back in 2015. Then it moved uh, to Colorado, and then there was a similar event in 2019 in China. Uh, Mike and I got together and uh, proposed that we should have a California version of this, but we wanted to change it. Yes, we would include the uh, houses, although they would come primarily from California, but we would also include um, outreach to K through 12 students, which we'll talk about later, and particularly the business community. And Mike had come up with this idea of the World's Fair of Sustainability, which I really liked. Um, well, we knocked on a lot of doors, visited with a lot of legislators, got a lot of no's, but then Dave Min, State Senator Dave Min, came into power, this is now about two or three years ago, and was able to secure $5 billion to create the Orange County Sustainability Decathlon. So tell me, how how does this actually look? I mean, this is an event, but it's an event that you're actually hoping will have legs and grow. Yes, I mean, as you well said, the, the ultimate goal is to use this as a vehicle for changing the economic DNA of Orange County uh, and making it the world's sustainability capital. And that's a heavy lift. And that'll, uh, it's about a 40 year effort. Uh, but this event right now is meant to engage three groups of people. Um, it starts with the premise that climate change is very real. And I think you see evidence that all over the place uh, in Orange County. And, and in order to deal with that, we have to engage the academic community, that is young people from K through senior year, as well as the senior, uh, people who are in um, university, we have to engage them. We have to engage the public to raise their comfort level with some of the changes that are gonna have to take place. You're gonna have to have uh, be buying a new car in 2035, it will be electric. That's a big change. Uh, they're banning electric uh, gas powered stoves and appliances <laughs> next year, you're gonna have to uh, purchase an electric lawnmower because gas lawnmowers won't be for sale. Um, and then finally, we want to incentivize the uh, private sector and uh, showcase all the great uh, things that people are putting out, the new ideas uh, that produce sustainable goods and services. And so if I could also add, please, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Lauren. No, go right ahead. You know, if, if I could also add uh, kind of a, the, the large scale vision of this is when you think about Silicon Valley, you think about technology and computers. 
when you think about the greater Boston area, think about biotech. I mean, these are uh, you know areas that really have these thriving economies around these industries. And the argument that Fred and I are trying to make is that when one thinks about Orange County, and if you look at the economic evolution of Orange County going back to the late 1800s, from ranching and agriculture to defense and entertainment to the present day, we have all of the tools and resources here to really be the sustainability and clean technology capital of the world. It We see this as kind of the next stage in the economic progression of the county. Why not us? Why not us? It's 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 good for Orange County. It's good in terms of job creation, creation and the environment. And we see our, our event as helping springboard that. I'll just and I'll add to that as well. We know from the governor and the state legislature's ambitious and aggressive <laughs> climate change legislation, in 20 years, there are going to be solar panels on every single rooftop. They have to be. Uh, and there are going to be windmills up and down our coast. Why not build them here in Orange County? It's just that simple. Absolutely. And it's so it's not just housing. I know right now we can see who Mike, you're you're all outfitted with the hard hat. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't because you were afraid of me. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling that you are on site. And it's it's not strictly about housing, but there is every aspect of our lives that is going to be reviewed and revised in order to make it more sustainable. Even without climate change, we should be concerned about sustaining our future. This is just the next step. And so essentially you guys are corralling all the aspects that are currently being focused on. Um, both, it makes perfect sense that you're both professors at Chapman, so you would do it from, from an academic perspective, but by getting government and the commercial side of our lives uh, involved, you're bringing together speakers, manufacturers, um, legislators. Tell us what's going to happen at this event. What could we expect? Go ahead, Mike. You tell her. <laughs> sure. Uh, Lauren, when um, number one, our event is is free. It's, it's uh, free and open to the public, aside from a, a parking uh, charge that the fairgrounds charges. It's October 5th through 8th and 12th through 15th. And what one can expect when they enter the OC Fair and Event Center during this time is, is the, the very large portion of the fairgrounds that we are uh, taking over, we are transforming into a sustainable village. So we invite uh, people of all ages, adults, all the way through kids to come to our event. You're going to be able to tour all of these beautiful, innovative, sustainable homes there are uh, roughly 14 altogether, a combination of completed homes and really elaborate exhibits. These college teams have spent the past year and a half designing and conceptualizing these homes. And as I speak, the reason I'm in this gear is we are on a construction site. They are all building these homes, <clears throat> excuse me, out here at the fairgrounds as, um, as I speak. We also have partnerships with Wyland, uh, the, the Orange County artist Wyland and the Wyland Foundation, where kids are going to be able to enter his uh, his clean water lab and learn about ocean conservation. Uh, we have a partnership with the Child Creativity Lab out of Santa Ana, and kids are going to be able to come and build these small model homes out of recycled material. We have a speaker series. We have so many. We have all the electric cars are going to be here so that people can see the latest and greatest in, in electric cars. Uh, a food, beer, and wine garden. What what Fred and I are not trying to do is we're not trying to point our finger at people and preach gloom and doom. Uh, we are trying to basically demonstrate to the world, to Orange County and to the world, that a sustainable lifestyle is within one's reach, and you don't have to make major, major sacrifices to your daily life uh, in order to live a sustainable lifestyle. The there are there are small steps and big steps that we can all take. So we see this as a way of educating the public and uh, as, as really a way of showing what a sustainable future is. Uh, again, going back to that analogy, the world's fair of sustainability, that is what we are, um, what we're doing. And we hope we can do this every two years indefinitely. We like the term, Lauren, I, I like the term edutainment. It's not 
just an educate, you know, we're professors. So, you know, we like to speak in 75 minute clunks. Um, this is not a, a, a boring uh, lecture. Um, it is not purely an entertainment venue like Comic-Con or Coachella or Ridgeline. Um, it is a combination of education and entertainment to, and geared toward raising people's comfort level with the changes that are going to take place according to the laws and regulations being passed in Sacramento. And uh, ultimately, is it is an education event. That's our goal. But at the same time, I believe you've hit the nail on the head. I, we all learn best when we're entertained by the learning. That's not to say we need to be in costumes and be funny. We're not all Steve yeah. Martin. But at the same time, the opportunity to engage more of our senses will help hammer home the message that, that the changes are actually impacting every aspect of our lives. It's not one thing or another. It is all of us. Is there a reason for the breakup in the dates? Is there something different happening in the different pockets? Yes, that's those three dates are when the uh, juries are going to be going through the houses and conducting the assessments and the measurements. So we can't have anyone there in order to, say, measure the effic energy efficiency of a particular home. And then also our teams <laughs> who've been working for the last 10 days, they need a break too. So, <laughs> but, but, but there is that, that, that reason for it. So it's uh, four days uh, from, uh, let's see, the 5th through the 9th, and then it starts again from the 12th to the 15th. And we are, the best thing about this is everybody knows the, in Orange County, uh, where the Orange County Fair and Event Center is. It's just an ideal location. It really is Orange County's town square. And uh, we're just very fortunate to be there. And I know you have a website up that people can refer to. Where can they find it? OC23.com. OC23.com. We'll post that it's and we'll post a link. Right. OCSD23.com. Okay. And in particular, uh, for Laguna Woods, we could certainly use uh, volunteers. You can okay. sign up for, to be a volunteer right on that website. And I, I've spoken at Laguna Woods, uh, particularly to the city council, and they were very, very supportive. Super. Well, I really hope that this will be an extra added push and our viewers are always engaged with things that are going on in the community. We love featuring specifically Orange County activities. And I guess, you know, whether they come to volunteer or they decide to participate often, they can come back more than once. It's free, it's fun, it's local. And gentlemen, congratulations. I really hope that we will be bringing you back to talk about the next iteration of your, you know, if you're of your new decathlon. So we congratulations. Thank you so much. We want to grow the event. Uh, this is our first year. In some ways, it's a, a model of what we hope to accomplish. But I think people who care about the environment, just showing up uh, is a way to demonstrate that you're concerned about uh, the environment. I think that's something we all have in common here in Orange County. Perfect. I agree. I absolutely agree. Thank you for coming to share with us. And we will put up all the information for our viewers and hopefully they will find you and start signing up on the website. Thanks for making the time and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. And we'll Thanks be right